What is up, YouTube? I'm Adam O'Dell, Chief Investment Strategist of MoneyMarkets.com, and I'm joined by my research analyst, Matt Clark, and we are here for another episode of Ask Adam Anything. As I understand it, we've got a couple of uh, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and Coinbase questions today. Uh, so I don't know the specifics, but I've got a couple of charts pulled up that I'm going to share, and uh, let's see exactly what folks are asking, Matt. Yeah, thank you. I, like I said, I, I try to give Adam at least some broad strokes in terms of what I'm going to ask him. I don't want to give away the farm just because I don't want to make it too easy for him. Um, so I, I at least just told him, you know, we're going to talk about Coinbase, which we've talked about before. And we're going to talk about crypto, which we've also talked covered before. And I encourage you to check out some of those other Ask Adam Anything videos that we have on our YouTube channel. Uh, and by the way, if you do have a question you'd like me to ask Adam, and it could be anything, it could be on any sector of the market. Uh, it could be on life in general. Maybe you're looking for the Zen-like uh, uh, infusions of Adam O'Dell, you can certainly ask that. You can email us at feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. We'll put that email address uh, right down below. And that's kind of our general email. So if you have a question maybe for Adam, or maybe you've got something for the cannabis uh, mar cannabis uh, marijuana market update, or maybe for Charles Sizemore, uh, then certainly uh, hit us up on that email address. But yeah, I'll get right to it. And uh, you know, obviously, crypto is is still kind of in vogue. It's still talked about a lot. Um, but I want to kind of focus a little bit on Coinbase because they just recently went public. And we did uh, an IPO question for you uh, in, in an earlier uh, segment where you said, you know, uh, if you if you have FOMO or fear of missing out, uh, then, you know, buy one share of Coinbase. Don't don't bet the farm. Don't don't go ape. Don't 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 be a strong hands gorilla, as uh, the Redditors might uh, might put it. Um, but I, I do have a question for you, and that is. You know, do you still like the idea of buying Coinbase at a hundred ninety dollar limit uh, if it falls there? Um, and, and you know that, that's in reference to the analysis that you had done earlier about you know buying a, an IPO after it drops fifty percent uh, or if it rises fifty percent. So if you look at that hundred ninety dollar limit, do you still think buying a, a share of Coinbase is a good idea? And if you do, why? And if you don't, why not? Yeah. So actually, I did uh, kind of two different takes on Coinbase uh, when it first came out. Uh, I did a video kind of recommending folks, uh, like, again, if you feel like you just have to be in it, uh, buy one single share of Coinbase. I was also specific in saying that I thought that the company is way overvalued at its IPO price and that that one purchase, that purchase of one share was not likely to make money. But hey, if you're buying one share for you know 300 bucks, uh, you know, it's probably not going to go to zero. So you're not going to lose all that much money. Uh, my rationale for that is that when you have some skin in the game, even if it's one share, you're more likely to pay attention to the company and the industry and what's going on. So that's kind of a way to keep yourself educated uh, versus if you don't have any investment or skin in the game. So that advice was kind of uh, for newbies that uh, are still learning the space that want to um, kind of follow it. And uh, I certainly didn't have high expectations for that share purchase. Um, indeed, Coinbase shares are down. They've basically been down from the IPO open. So it's just been a, a gradual slide. Uh, they kind of bottomed out in mid-May and have been trading sideways for the past two months. Um, so we saw a little bit of uptick uh, from June into July, but it's still kind of a very a very weak uh, chart pattern. So the other analysis I did was I looked at a lot of historical IPOs. These are companies that uh, went on to be successful. So there is some survivorship bias in there. Uh, as we've, we've talked about before, as one uh, of our readers pointed out. But the idea was I did some quantitative analysis and research, and it showed that if you either place a limit order to buy the IPO once it's fallen by 50% from its IPO price, or a stop market order to buy the shares once it's risen by 50%, either or, okay? So it's like a 50% proposition that it's going to fall by 50%, or it's a 50% proposition that's going to rise by 50%. If you follow that bracket entry technique, um, over time, it's going to behoove you. You actually do better than if you just bought at the exact IPO price. And the reason for that is, is you get a much better entry price advantage by buying at 50% down. When you have that opportunity, then the penalty that you pay for paying 50% more uh, if you have to buy on that stock market uh, rising market price. So overall, if you do this on you know, 30 or more, 50 or more IPOs and get the law of large numbers in your favor, then that bracket trade, either buying at 50% down or at 50% up, does give you about, I think it was a 20 to 25% um, advantage over just buying the absolute IPO price. So Coinbase IPO'd around 380, 381 or so. And 50% of that is about the $190 level. Um, so the idea was if shares of Coinbase fall down to 190, that's a 50% discount from the IPO price. And that's a good place to have a limit order to buy. Now, I will say this, it, 
Coinbase may still very well be overpriced and may be overvalued at 190. So this realized that was a uh, kind of a quantitative model, uh, a toy model, if you will. Um, so I'm not necessarily saying that it's uh, undervalued at 190. It may be overvalued at 190. Uh, but I do still support that idea. The other way you can do this is wait until wait to buy an IPO until the six month trend is up. Some of the IPOs that take off right away won't uh, will will develop a six month positive trend within six months if they go up initially, and you're going to end up paying more than the IPO price, just like the fifty percent bracket idea. Otherwise, some IPOs fall 50, 60, 70, 80, even ninety percent and never have a six month positive trend, and then they turn higher. And if you wait for that six month positive trend, you could be in the situation where you're buying uh, an IPO like Coinbase for let's say 80% less than the IPO price. And you're buying as the trend is rising, which gives you some, benef um, some assurance that you're not buying the so-called proverbial falling knife. And uh, you're, you have trend in your favor. Something has happened, either um, investor sentiment around that stock or valuation or growth or profitability. Something, a positive turnaround has happened if you wait to buy that six month positive uptrend. So right now Coinbase is not in a six month positive uptrend. Um, so I would you know, still be hesitant if you wanna put in a limit order to buy at 190 for a small amount, You know, take a nibble at it. Um, that's certainly something you could do, but I would be more waiting to, to really plow money into it if uh, if the six month trend was higher. And again, I'm still gonna look at a valuation model to see if uh, the numbers are there. So uh, we did re read recently that Coinbase is expanding the number of uh, coins, cryptocurrencies that it's gonna allow on its platform, which is kind of a departure from its um, you know first kind of mover status as far as sticking with the, the majors, so to speak. And uh, that may be a little bit of a desperation play when they realize that uh, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, prices are down and maybe trading volumes are down and, and revenue isn't maybe what it was in that first, uh, you know, bang out quarter. So, um, so it's a, it's a nuanced answer, but yeah, I would, I would still wait a while to buy Coinbase. I think there's probably some more downside. Yeah, I did see the, the, the Coinbase was adding more coins to its kind of arsenal of what it's going to offer. And I agree with you. I, I think it's kind of a desperation play. Uh, I, you know, and, and you mentioned this, and I want to lead this into another question for you. And that is that Bitcoin and Ethereum are down and they, and they have been down uh, for a bit, even as inflation uh, worries continue, uh, you know, when inflation was was, was an issue before, uh, you know, we saw investors kind of turn more towards, you know, crypto as a potential kind of safety net. Uh, that's not necessarily happening right now. So my question is, is, is with those prices falling for Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and insert random cryptocurrency here, um, is, is there more downside or is now a good time to buy in your opinion? I think there's more downside. Um, in fact, I wrote, you know, I have, I have kind of what I call a crypto pen pal, uh, the guy that I work with that lives in Thailand. And we've been watching the crypto markets and, and trading emails back and forth. And I, I just pulled up on, on June 4th, I sent him an email and said, um, you know, this is just a speculative guess, but this consolidation pattern that we're seeing, we'd already had the first drop in, in price of Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I said, we had this kind of short term consolidation pattern of a couple of weeks sideways. And and it looked like a dip that a lot of people would want to buy. But I, I wrote him on uh, June 4th and saying, I think that this uh, consolidation pattern is going to resolve to the downside with one more downside push. Um, so that was, what, five weeks ago at this point, And we've really kind of more or less gone sideways. Ethereum has broken down a, a bit more than Bitcoin. Um, but I do think there's um, more downside in these. And I'll show you why. Let me just uh, share my screen here. All right, Matt, can you see my chart here? I uh, can, yes. All right. So this is a Bitcoin US dollar. Um, you can see here the, the massive run up in late 2020 to mid 2021 and uh, then the subsequent drop. So both of you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum are down about 50, 55 um, percent. But I think there's more downside. And the reason being, uh, well, first of all, you've got this rising 200 day moving average. The 50 day moving average is just tanked. And you're about to have this cross. Now, there's nothing magical about this cross. It's called a death cross when the 50 goes under the 200. There's nothing magical about that. Uh, price is below the 200 and below the 500. Um, we have a series of lower lows and lower highs. So from a technical chartist perspective, we are in a downtrend. Uh, we're in a you know, significant correction and in, in a downtrend. Uh, but more of what I want to focus on here is this bottom subgraph here. I've got what's called the uh, RSI. And uh, this is basically a momentum indicator. Uh, in red here, when it overshoots kind of the upper boundary, this, this indicator goes from zero to 100. And when it 
when it overshoots this upper boundary, it turns red. And when it, um, and that means that the market is overbought. And then when it uh, undershoots it on the downside, uh, you've got an oversold market. But what you'll see in markets like this, I mean, markets are not perfectly mean reverting. Okay, so markets are trending. Certainly Bitcoin went on a huge, massive bull trend. And so what you'll see is many different pushes into that overbought territory. So here in uh, January, February of 2020, you have one push. I'm gonna try to circle it with my mouse. Hopefully that shows up. Uh, another push in May, another push in August, and, and multiple pushes uh, as 2020 turned into 2021. So this is um, this is not an indicator that you just want to sell as soon as it hits an overbought uh, condition the first time, nor do you want to buy as soon as the market hits an oversold condition on the downside the very first time. What you often see is that the market pound lower and lower and lower and hit several of these oversold conditions uh, before you actually reach a bottom. So in Bitcoin, we've had one of those over, oversold conditions. So in mid to late May, uh, on that very first drop when Bitcoin went down, uh, I think it was around 35, 40% within a couple of weeks, um, you got that oversold condition, but we still haven't seen the second one. Um, let me pull up a chart of Ethereum. And you see a similar pattern, but what you see here is again, uh, during the run-up, you see one, two, three, four, five, six or more pushes into overbought territory. That's indicative of a very strongly trending bullish market. And then you see uh, the RSI fall back below the 50 line, below the midpoint. Um, and then now it's kind of in this lower range. It's about 39 right now. So it's in the it's in the bottom half of the range. But we have yet to see kind of a climactic sell-off push in uh, Ethereum. So we haven't really seen that oversold condition. And again, you're, you don't really want to buy when you see that first oversold condition. You want to buy um, after a second or third one has developed typically, and you see some what we call a bullish divergence where the uh, momentum indicator starts to pull higher, starts to make a series of higher highs and higher lows. And if uh, alongside that bullish movement in or turnaround in the uh, momentum indicator, if you see the actual price of the trading asset continue to make lower lows, and that's called a bullish divergence, and that's usually a good time, um, usually a good indication that the, that the bottom is in, and that you're going to start to see some uh, price recovery, and it's a good time to start nibbling at that. So we have not seen that in Ethereum. Uh, we have not seen a single oversold condition on the RSI in Ethereum. We've only seen one in Bitcoin. And uh, if you look back to the, the last time that these markets pulled back very deeply, um, you'd, it was basically in, um, you know, the market topped in 2019 and then pulled back down into the early, early 2020 uh, COVID crash. Uh, but we, you, you did, you saw multiple uh, oversold conditions before the market finally uh, rose. So um, folks are emailing me and saying, is now a good time to buy Bitcoin or Ethereum? Um, no, it's not in my opinion. So, you know, they're, they're both down 50, 50 high percent. So you could think that they're on sell, but I think they're gonna come down more. Um, what are my price targets? Well, if you look at Ethereum, um, there's really not support for this until about the 1500 level. So right now we're trading at 1900. Uh, this thing is, I imagine, at least gonna go down to 1500, which is roughly where the 200 day moving average is. And I think it could fall uh, even further to somewhere between the 800 and 1000 level. That's still gonna be above the 2020 lows. It's even gonna be above the 2019 highs. Um, so, you know, we know that these cryptos go through major boom and bust cycles, uh, but I do not think that the bottom is in, in Ethereum. If we pull back up the chart of Bitcoin, uh, same thing. Okay, so right here, I don't know if hopefully we can see it here, but the $30,000 level is a key level. There should be some support there, so I wouldn't be surprised to see um, the asset trade sideways for a little bit at 30,000. But once, it, once, if and when it breaks down below 30,000, there's really a void of support. And we could see a very rapid decline from 30,000 down to at least 20,000 a coin, if not uh, somewhere in the 10 to $15,000 range. Um, the other factor here is we all know, or not everybody, but I mean, the news is certainly focused on folks like Elon Musk and Michael Saylor buying Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, with the, 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 the treasury of their publicly traded companies. Uh, Saylor even took out debt. He took out $500 million worth of debt uh, to buy more Bitcoin. And from what I'm reading, uh, it's estimated that he has about $2.75 billion worth of Bitcoin in his treasury and that the average price of that is at $26,000 uh, Bitcoin to US dollars. So 
again, my opinion is if we fall through that $30,000 level, and if we get close to that uh, $26,000 break even level where sailors, um, you know, his, his break even point, um, we could see a lot of downside action once that, that level is broken. I'm not saying that he's necessarily going to sell his whole wad uh, once he hits 26 or 25,000, but he's going to, um, he's going to certainly take some heat as far as uh, people are looking at his stock and, and people on his board, and uh, he may have to do some write downs. And psychologically, that's going to be uh, very destructive for the uh, the market. So I think there's a lot more downside uh, in Bitcoin. So I'm you know I'm certainly interested in buying uh, on a dip, but I don't think this is the dip to buy. Very good. So we've we've kind of covered the the range here in terms of Coinbase and 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 Bitcoin and Ethereum and whether you think they're buys or not. Uh, do definitely encourage everyone watching to uh, check out some of our other videos on YouTube as well. Uh, I know in our uh, in our weekend Bull and Bear podcast talked about the uh, the Robinhood IPO, uh, which really doesn't have a date yet, but still is generating a lot of conversation. Uh, we have the marijuana market update. Don't forget about our membership program as well. Uh, you can just click the join button down below, and you can find out more about all the exclusive content you get by becoming a member of our YouTube community. So Adam, that's all the questions I have for you. If anyone does have a question they'd like me to ask or a question for any of us, myself, Charles, or Adam, they email us at feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. And uh, we would love to uh, get that scored away for you and uh, get those questions answered as quickly as possible. But uh, until then, Adam, that's all I have. And uh, certainly hope you have a great week and everyone else has uh, a great safe trading week as well. Absolutely. And folks can also hit us up in uh, with questions and comments in the comments below here in YouTube. We'll certainly that is right. uh, That's filter, filter through those as well. So uh, yeah, have a great week, Matt, and we'll see everybody next week. Sounds good.